What's up, everyone? I'm James Lynch, and this is Early Look, the show where I take a look at an upcoming notable fight. And on today's edition, we're going to be taking a look at the UFC 282 light heavyweight title rematch between champion Yuri Prohaska and Glover Teixeira. But before I give you my preview and pick, make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell. You do those three things. It really does help out this channel big time. I know I haven't done this show in a while. Happy to be back. We finally got a couple of big fights coming up. Uh, this is one we could not ignore. And uh, UFC 282, like I mentioned there, uh, gonna, actually, I didn't mention it there. It's going to be taking place December 10th, T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. So you remember their first fight was in Singapore. This one on North American soil. Can't wait for it. Going to be an awesome, awesome card. Uh, let's go through it. If you haven't uh, seen the show before, basically I go through a bunch of stats, a bunch of little intangibles. You guys decide for yourself if it means anything or not. Um, and I also, for this uh, early look edition, I'm also going to go through uh, their first fight and some of the notes I made. I did have a chance to rewatch it. So I'll give you my take on that first fight as well. Uh, let's start first with the champion, Yuri Prohaska. Again, this is a five round fight. Whoops. Let's go all the way to the top here. So there you go. You can see Yuri Prohaska, the current light heavyweight champion, 29-3-1 record. He's got 25 knockouts, three submissions, and one decision. He's the only fighter to ever submit Glover to share a pretty nice feather in his cap there to get that done. Uh, Yuri Prohaska, you can see down here, is 30 years old. He's six foot three with an 80-inch reach, so he's 13 years younger, one inch taller, and has a four-inch reach advantage in this fight against Glover to share in their rematch. Uh, Yuri, of course, is the former uh, Ryzen light heavyweight champion. He was also the Czech GCF light heavyweight champion. Pretty notable thing. It was on his wiki, so I uh, figured we should mention that as well. Uh, Yuri's got fight of the night twice in his UFC career, uh, both against Dominic Reyes and Glover Teixeira. He's got performance of the night two times uh, in his fights with uh, Volkan Ozdemir and Dominic Reyes. And uh, if you look here, Yuri Prohaska, going all the way back to his career here, did not have an amateur debut. Uh, he didn't have any amateur fights. He went straight, straight to the pros. Uh, his first pro fight was April of 2012, which was one month earlier than Glover Teixeira made his UFC debut, which is very interesting. Uh, Yuri is, uh, as we know right now, just three UFC fights, uh, all finishes, and um, some notable wins, obviously, in that uh, in that span are obviously Volkan, who's, you know, I don't think he's ranked anymore, but Volkan is uh, someone who's been ranked for a while. Dominic Reyes and, of course, Glover Teixeira in his last fight. Uh, some notable losses. Uh, he hasn't had any in the UFC, obviously, just three fights. But if you go back and look here, he actually lost to Boyan Velikovic way back in 2012, a UFC vet there. Um, also lost to Mohamed Lawal, the former Strike Force light heavyweight champion, Bellator vet as well. Um, but he did avenge that loss to Mo Lawal later on, uh, knocking him out in 2019. Uh, as far as layoffs go, Yuri really hasn't had too many. Uh, the fight from Volkan to Dominic Reyes, there was a 295-day layoff. And then going from Reyes to Glover, there was a 407-day layoff. So just two layoffs in his career. But if you look overall, you're scrolling down here, you're seeing a lot of fights here in his entire career that are pretty... He's pretty active is kind of what I'm getting at here as far as what he's been able to do uh, in his career so far. Um, let's look at uh, some injuries. He hasn't had any. Uh, the, the Glover fight that was canceled was just rescheduled. Uh, the Dominic Reyes fight there was a COVID thing. So he's never actually had any injuries in his UFC career that have taken him out of any fights. And that's pretty much it on Yuri. He's quite an enigma. I mean, there's really no one like Yuri Prohaska as far as his fight style, his personality. And we've heard all the stories from him locking himself in a room for three days to ex, you know, get rid of his demons. Uh, there's really no one like Yuri. I have not had a chance to speak with him yet. Hopefully I will uh, leading up to fight time. I usually get Yuri before every one of his fights. So we'll try and uh, get him uh, leading up to this one. So that is everything you need to know about Yuri Prohaska. Again, not a lot to talk about because his UFC career just has three fights. And that's typically what we focus on on the early look show. Let's talk about the former champ Glover Teixeira shall we Glover Teixeira you can see there 33 and 8 record 18 knockouts 10 submission wins and five decisions he's 43 years old he's six foot two with the 76 inch reach I mentioned it there Yuri has all the advantages from a physical standpoint uh, he's the former light heavyweight champion, like I mentioned there. He's a Brazilian national wrestling team member. He's the second oldest, was the second oldest UFC champion in history behind Randy Couture. Um, and he's the oldest first-time champion in UFC history as well. He's a second-degree BJJ black belt and obviously trains in... Uh, at his, own, at his own gym, uh, to share MMA and fitness in Connecticut with uh, Alex Pereira and also with uh, Dominic Reyes, who was a new addition to that gym as well. Okay, Glover's had a very long MMA career. Let's go check this out. Glover Teixeira did not have an amateur debut, or amateur fight, I should say. I don't know why I keep saying debut. He didn't have an amateur uh, fight uh, in, in his career. 
His MMA debut was back in June of 2002. What were you guys doing in June of 2002? Some of you watching this might have not even been born in June of 2002. So just goes to show uh, how long it's been. Of course, that was at WEC3. He lost his first uh, fight ever, which is interesting. You go look at the fighters that have lost their first fight. The list goes on. There's you know, Forrest Griffin, Hen and Barrow, just some to name uh, that I know have lost their first uh, pro MMA fight. Um, very interesting to see. Uh, that, that that was the case, but um, obviously went on an incredible run after that. Um, he uh, went on this uh, really, really, really long run here, uh, you know, fought for a while without losing and did not make his UFC debut, like I mentioned there, till May of 2012. So Glover making his MMA debuts, pro debut, all that in uh, April and uh, in May, uh, Glover would go out there and submit Kyle Kingsbury in the very first round. Now, uh, Glover Teixeira would have been in the UFC a lot sooner. Of course, people remember that he was a main training partner of Chuck Liddell back in the day. Uh, he was going to be in the UFC earlier, but had some visa issues. That's why you'll see here a lot of fights in Brazil, even though at the time he was living in the U.S. So, um, again, he could have been in the UFC even earlier. And uh, who knows what the division would have looked like then if uh, Glover had entered the fray, because obviously very uh, talented fighter. Uh, some notable wins. So he, uh, Glover has a 16 and a six record in the UFC. I think I got that right. Um, he's got 13 stoppage wins. Some notable wins in Glover's career include Rampage Jackson, Ryan Bader, Rashad Evans, Jared Cannonier, Anthony Smith, Tiago Santos. And of course, a really a good win that is, uh, you know, people still talk about it was, uh, back in back last year, uh, Jan Blahovich. That was a very dominant performance over Jan. Uh, we have not seen Jan dominated like that since earlier in his career. That was a very, very, very uh, big win there, there for him there. Uh, some notable losses uh, for Glover to share include John Jones, Phil Davis, Rumble Johnson, Alexander Gustafson, Corey Anderson, and obviously Yuri Prohaska in his last fight. Um, he hasn't really had many major layoffs in his career. If you look at it here, he's fighting, you know, one, two times a year. Uh, nothing crazy. Uh, going into the last fight with Yuri, uh, there was a 224 day layoff, but Glover's been pretty active throughout his career. Hasn't really had to worry about too much stuff. Now, uh, in terms of injuries, he's had a few. Uh, let's go all the way back to the time he was supposed to fight Jimmy Manua back in uh, 2018. He had a shoulder injury there. That was in uh, 2000. Oh, sorry, I'm going. I jumped ahead here. Actually, uh, the first time he had an injury that took him out of a fight, he was supposed to fight Rashad Evans. Had a knee injury in that fight. That was at UFC Fight Night 61 in 2015. Uh, February 2015, he had a knee injury there. Then he was supposed to fight Misha Serkinov. He ended up fighting Misha later on and beat him in the first round. But uh, UFC Fight Night 119, uh, October 2017, he had a minor injury in that one. Not sure exactly what that was, but the fight was you know rebooked uh, two months later, so it couldn't have been that serious. Um, then he was supposed to fight uh, Jimmy Manuel, like I mentioned before, had a shoulder injury. But outside of that, he has not really been injured that much. You look at a lot of this, uh, you know, COVID stuff. Uh, you know, the Anthony Smith fight, COVID related. Uh, Kutalaba. Kutalaba had the injury. Imagine if that fight would have happened. So if you look at it here, Teixeira, much like Yuri Prohaska, very active fighter and does not get injured too much. He's actually, speaking of enigmas, Glover Teixeira, you know, still looking as good as he is at 43. That's an enigma in itself. Now, Glover, throughout his career, has only really had one close fight, and that was the Krilov fight. UFC Fight Night Vancouver, the last Canadian event that the UFC has uh, had. Uh, that was in September of 2019. It was a split decision in that fight. I went back and looked at the media scorecards for that one. 12 media members scored the fight for Glover, only four scoring it, scoring it for Krilov. So I think most people watching did feel like the judges got that one right, but always got to point that out because that was a split decision. Okay, let's go look at their first fight. Since I've talked about both fighters, I've kind of exhausted everything uh, that you need to know here. Um, so if you look at that fight, Yuri wins their first fight by submission in the fifth round. Um, very, very close to... Uh, yeah, very, very, very close fight. So uh, let's go back round by round. I do have the UFC stats here as well. Take this for what it's worth because significant strikes are not always super accurate here. But if you look at it there, um, we'll, we'll go by, we'll, what I'll do is I'll kind of give you my notes and then I'll sort of talk about uh, how the uh, significant strikes sort of panned out in that one. Okay, so first round I gave to Glover in the very first fight. Um, if you remember, Teixeira got a takedown early on in that fight. Um, he actually landed a combination on Yuri that actually stunned him. And then Yuri at the very, very end of the round did land some shots there, but it wasn't enough to steal the round. And you look at the significant strikes in that round, um, 75% there for 20 of, uh, 27 to 36. So 75% for Glover Teixeira, just 56% for Yuri. So really strong first round there for Glover. And you even look at the target overall and all that. Uh, yeah, certainly very interesting there. Okay, round two, I gave that to Yuri. In that, in that uh, Yuri round, if you remember, Yuri actually got eye poked uh, early on in the fight, didn't affect him at all. Then Yuri landed about eight to 10 shots and uh, Glover got hurt uh, like early in that round, or I shouldn't say early, midway through the round. Um, and one of the big things that happened in that round as well is that Yuri stuffed a takedown. So Glover not able to get the fight to the ground, but he did land some elbows uh, to share towards the end of the round, but it wasn't enough for him to steal it here. So I gave that second round to Yuri. 
Yuri, uh, Yuri ended up landing more. He landed 36 of 66. Glover only landing 27 shots. Glover actually had the higher percentage there, 64% of shots. Uh, but if you look at the amount of shots that was landed, Yuri actually landed more shots that round. So he landed 36, Glover only landing 27. So again, these rounds are close. Like I, I can understand people maybe saying, hey, one round went the other way, but I personally scored that second round for Yuri. Now round three to me was the most significant in the fight because I think that was uh, one where Yuri clearly won. And we'll, we'll talk sort of about uh, what happened in that. If you remember, Yuri uh, obviously had some bleeding. He had a cut there. I was examined, uh, but it was all good to go. Uh, Glover ends up, um, you know, trying to, you know, get a takedown. Yuri stuffs it and uh, landed some really good punches on Glover. Um, he also landed a body shot in that round, if you remember, that hurt Glover to Shara. Uh, Yuri then went and tried and attempted a uh, arm triangle choke. Did not happen in that uh, in that round. And uh, it was actually Glover who ended up on top to uh, finish the round. Uh, but still, that body shot. And if you look at the strikes in general here, uh, you can see there 72% uh, significant strikes for Yuri Prohaska, landing 43 of 59. Just 12 uh, significant strikes for Glover to Shara, just 54%. So, uh, I think that was a clear round for Yuri Prohaska compared to some of the other rounds in this fight. Okay, round four, I thought went to Glover. Uh, some of the things that happened in that round, uh, Glover landing a, a nice combination, getting a takedown. He also mounted Yuri and landed some ground and pound. Uh, almost got an arm triangle uh, finish himself in that round, if you remember. Uh, but Yuri ended up on top. Um, you know, Glover then uh, took his back later in the round as well. Um, and Yuri got out of that. A lot of submission attempts there. Not as much volume in that round for either guy. If you look here, just 53% for um, Yuri Prohaska. Haska, 21 of 39 there, if you can kind of see it, um, uh, strikes in that round, 24 of 29 for Glover. So Glover just edging out the strikes. Again, I think that's another reason why I like him and the submission attempts as well. I think that was a, a Glover round as well, but you can see the stats there very close in terms of the striking. Okay, fifth round. This is where things get really interesting. Uh, Teixeira actually uh, stunned Yuri for a bit uh, with some of his striking. Um, and uh, he actually, uh, if you remember, the, the probably the most notable thing in that round is that he tried to jump for a guillotine choke and ended up slipping. Um, Yuri ended up standing up and uh, and ended up uh, eating a combo there. Uh, both fighters extremely tired in this round, if you remember. Uh, Yuri ends up getting to his feet and has to share his back. Uh, threatens first with a leg submission, then a crucifix, then a rear naked. And then that is where uh, Yuri Prohaska taps out Glover to share. If you're like me, I was in complete shock. I didn't think if Yuri was going to win, it would be by submission. But, you know, again, that round... Uh, uh, again, both fighters very, very tired here. And just sort of leading into that fifth round, it was actually uh, Glover who had the edge there. Uh, 21 of 32, so 65% significant strikes. Just six strikes landed uh, for Glover to share in that fifth round. So the way things were going in that round, it looked like Glover was on his way to potentially winning the fight there, at least on my scorecards, because I had Glover winning the first, Yuri winning the second and third, Glover winning the fourth, and he likely would have won the fifth. So it would have been 3-2 Glover had the fight continued. But obviously Yuri making sure it didn't have to go to the judges' hands and ended up getting the submission victory in the fifth round. So very interesting. Okay, let's look at the odds here. Uh, showing most books have Yuri as about a two to one favorite, and it's understandable. Again, this guy seems impossible to finish or to take out. And I know you could argue that in that first fight that it was a possibility that Glover was on his way to winning a decision in that fight. But again, Yuri is a guy you can't count out even in the fifth round. And I think it also silenced some critics about his cardio because even though both fighters were tired, Yuri was still able to get a finish in that fifth round. I think that speaks volumes to the talent level that he has. So I think the odds are right where it needs to be. The other thing with Glover is at some point he's got to, you know, he's, 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 he's got to slow down a little bit here as I'm stuttering my words, but uh, at 42 years old, like Glover is, I mean, at some point the body's going to break down. Age has got to catch up here and Yuri is in the prime of his career. Yuri's not even, um, sorry, I should uh, mention Glover's 43. Uh, I was looking at the, uh, at, at here, this was their first fight. He was 42 at the time, 29. Now Glover's 30 and Yuri is 43. That's what I meant to say there. But uh, as you can see, uh, Glover a lot older, like I mentioned, the tail of the tape there. So how is the rematch going to go down? What is my pick? Well, I think, I think both fighters learned a lot from that first fight. They both learned that, I mean, these are two guys that are extremely tough to take out. Um, I think that Yuri is going to take this fight. And I think this time around, I don't think he'll submit Glover again. I could see him getting another late finish in this one. This time, though, possibly by TKO knockout. I could see him just, you know, landing some shots on Glover. Not like a full knockout, but like, you know, one where the referee has to step in and, and separate, um, you know, both fighters with Yuri landing some ground and pound. I think at some point he'll get a takedown or he'll, he'll clip Glover and then go for the kill, the TKO finish, something like that. I could see that happening because... I mean, both fighters took the significant damage. Yuri is no stranger to damage himself. Even the Dominic Reyes fight, he took a lot of damage in that fight. He was actually knocked out in that fight and ended up coming to and getting the spinning back elbow finish. But a 
if we're, we're, we're looking at two fighters here, the older fighter, even though he's durable and Glover Teixeira, at some point that's got to break down. I think with Yuri, he's proven that, you know, again, he's a guy that can take a punch and is extremely tough to finish and has a ground game that's good enough that can uh, apparently hang with a guy like Glover Teixeira's ground game. So that's why I think Yuri's going to win this fight. I think Yuri's either going to win by a late finish, fourth or fifth round knockout, or Yuri potentially wins the decision here. I could see that happening too, but I got to go Yuri here because I think he's getting better and better. I think with Glover... At some point, it's got to deteriorate, and I think it might be this fight just because of the damage he's taken with his age, everything else. I just think Yuri's going to go out there and get it done and, and prove that he is the best light heavyweight in the world. Uh, might not be pretty. He might take a lot of shots. There might be moments in the fight again, like the first fight, where you see you know, maybe Yuri get rocked or him in bad positions, but Yuri's one of those guys that I have a hard time counting out in any fight, and I think he goes out there and gets it done. So my official pick, I will go with Yuri Prohaska, fourth round TKO finish over Glover Teixeira to retain his light heavyweight title. So I don't know what you guys think in the comment section below. Again, super close fight here. Really exciting matchup. Also, I, I didn't have a chance to look up the stat, but when is a rematch taking place in the same calendar year? That doesn't happen too often. So these guys have not had, I mean, the fight was back in June, but still that's not a lot of time off considering how much damage both guys took in that fight. So very interested to see how the rematch plays out. Follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Lynch on Sports. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Lynch on Sports. While you're there, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. It's three easy things you can do. It really does help with the channel big time. I'm James Lynch. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.